Hello, welcome back, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could use these different uh, NURBS curves, such as I have right here. And we're going to be using the extrude command, uh, specifically the tube, and how you could create from these two paths, I'm going to go ahead and show you the end results right now, and how you could create this cool looking NURBS curve um, base uh, nerve models. Uh, when you look at this, this is kind of inspired like from like old Hot Wheels tracks. And just by using those two curves, I was able to create this really cool model. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, right now. I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hide all of these different components. Okay. And what I have right here, I already have like a, an extra copy of this path. I'm gonna go and switch to my front view and I'm gonna close this window. We'll come back to that. And what I wanted to do, I wanna create a shape. Uh, the way that I created this shape, I just use the, under the cur create curves tool, CV curve tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just lock um, a snap to grid, turned on for right now. I'll create a, a simpler version. What I want to do, I want to make sure that my curve is going uh, clockwise. So I'm going to start off right here. And you can see how it's, it's snapping to my grid. And I'm just going to create, uh, let's see, we'll go up right here. The closer that we are, you see how we get these curve points. The, the further we go, go away, you see how it's going to create more of a bend. You might like that. Uh, that's fine. Um, let's see, I'll go right here. I'll, I'll create a different type of little bump as such. And I'm just going to do the same on the uh, opposite side. And there you go. I'm going to press uh, enter. I want to go ahead and go back to control vertices just so you can see that we started off right here and we went towards the right. So it's going clockwise. Uh, does that matter? Uh, you can always change it if you're going the opposite direction. Um, depending on how you set it up, um, we'll, we'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this. I want to close this curve. So I'm going to go to curves and I'm going to tell it to open close option box. Typically this ignore gives me good results. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to apply. Okay, that looks good. I'll keep this as it is. And I'm going to go ahead and close this window. This curve two, um, right now it's called curve two. Oh, and you know what? One of the things that I forgot to do I forgot to set my project directory. So let's go to file. I'm going to go to project window. And I'm going to go ahead and tell this new. I'm going to call these uh, NURBS models. And OK, this is the location where I want these. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to accept. Great, I'll save it in a moment. You see, this shape is a lot larger. So I'm going to go ahead and now go to, if I want to, I can right mouse click, control vertex. And if I want to make any type of adjustments, I can at this point. So if, say, for example, I want to select these, I can switch to move tool. Uh, I'm going to turn off snap to grids now by clicking this icon up here. I could adjust this, say, if I want these to be a little bit uh, sharper. I can do something like that. So what I do to one side, I'll go ahead and do to the other side as well. All right, uh, I'm gonna go back to my object mode, but I'm gonna switch to scale. Notice that my scale is down here, uh, even though my object is located a little bit higher. If you wanna change the placement of your manipulator handle, one way you could do that if you go to modify, there is a center pivot. This is going to center it based off your object. So I'm going to go ahead and just scale this down a bit. And now if I want to, I can just scale X, Y, and Z. I want to make this 
smaller. Actually, make it make it a little bit larger. If I want to make it wider, I could. But I actually want to make this slightly smaller because this one's a little a lot larger. I just want to show you what this could look like. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my previous one. I'm going to select it, Control H. And now what I have, I have this one path that's right here. I'm going to go to my top view. And right here, I do have my path. I'm going to, I'm going to use my curve tool yet again. Uh, curve tool, CV curve tool. And sure, I'll start right here. Uh, this time I'm gonna press and hold down X so I could snap it just at the origin. And that's it, I'm gonna let go of X now. And now um, I'm gonna go ahead and put as many points as I want to. Say I want this to go straight and maybe I want it to curve this way. Now, one thing to note is that the more points that you put closer to one another, it will affect your path depending on how, if you go further away. I'll go like this. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And now my perspective view, you can see this is flat. This is a flat line. I'm gonna right mouse click on it. I can go to control vertices. And now what I wanna do, uh, it just happens that this this shape is a lot higher. I'm going to go ahead and go to my control vertex. I'm going to go ahead and select a bunch of these. I'm going to switch my move tool. I'm just going to raise this up. This is kind of like a ramp and I want it to slowly kind of go downwards. So I'm going to select these and you can see I'm just kind of lowering it down as it goes further away from this is where it starts. I have a little drop. Now, if I wanted to, to make this a smooth transition, uh, right now, notice that whenever I select one vertice, it's only manipulating that one. If I double click on my move tool over here, uh, within the tool settings window, that's over here. If you, Let's see, under soft selection, it's not turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it soft selection. And if I increase this value a bit, you can see now when you select one, it selects the entire range. So the choice is up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe click on this, this point right here. And I definitely want this last one to, to dip down. You know, it's kind of like Hot, Hot Wheels inspired and I want these to kind of, this is supposed to be like a little track. So maybe I want this one to, to dip a little bit higher. We'll see. We shall see. I think I want these to go a little bit up. These go, to go down. I'm going to turn this off now. And that's going to be fine. I'm going to right mouse click on my object mode. And if necessary, what I want to do. Now, you might have created this, this shape. If I look in the front view at the origin axis, which is fine. What I want to do, I just want to kind of move them close to one another. I'm going to go back to my perspective view. Now, you don't necessarily need to position them perfectly, uh, but it does help. That way you know where they're going to be at. Let's see, I'm going to right mouse click in, go to control vertices. I want to further manipulate these just a bit, I want these to go up, okay. Give myself a little dip there. I'm gonna go back to the object mode, okay. So now I'm gonna close this window. 
So we have, we have these two different shapes. We have what's called our profile, which is the shape that we want to use. And then we have our path, which is going to be where we want this to be extruded along that path. Now, it's very important the order in which you select these two. I'm going to select my profile first. I'm going to hold down shift and then select my path. Then what I want to do, I want to go into, make sure that you're in the modeling menu set. And we're going to go into curves. I'm sorry. We're going to go into surfaces. We're going to go to extrude option box. Within these options, they are for style. There's three different ones. Uh, just to go, I'm going to, I'm going to apply these and undo them. We do have distance. If you select distance, you have a extrude distance and then you, I'm going to go and tell it to apply. And it's just going to apply based off of that distance. You see that shape? So this is really cool because depending on what you're working on, you can create some cool effects, um, but this is not what I want to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo either control or command Z. Now flat, uh, flat is just going to go straight out flat. You'll see, apply. And you can see that right here where we started off, there is either results either at profile or at the path. I told it to do the path. So it's following this, this path. And first notice how it's, uh, this might happen to you where it's kind of reversed. Uh, that's an easy fix. You just select the actual surface and under surfaces at the very bottom, there is re reverse direction. Don't even know, need to go in the options and it'll turn it inside out or, out, or outside in. So now we get the gray on the outside. The gray represents that this, this is the, the, out, the outer side. It was flipped inside. Now, if I look at it, this is flat. Now notice what happens right here. It doesn't keep like uh, the, the distance between the shape. It's just completely kind of being extruded, but it's, it's still, it's, it extrudes flat across the area. And you can see over here where it ends, I'm going to rotate this around just so you can see it. It's still flat according to the location. So if I look at it, it kind of looks like it has 3D, but it does. But when you look at it at the side, it's not the results that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and undo a command or control Z. Okay. So now we're back right here. Or actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and uh, create it again because I want to show you something. I'm going to go back to surfaces, reverse direction again. I'm just going to select this and just move it off to the side so that we could see the difference between flat and then tube. So I'm going to select the profile and then I don't want to move it and then shift select the path. And this time I'm going to select tube and results either at the profile or I'm going to tell it the path. And we do have other options that I would suggest that you um, experiment with. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to apply. And this time when we look at them, oh, that would be a, a, a gnarly curve. <laughs> so right here, I, I like what's happening right here, but over here, it kind of twists on me. So I'm going to, let's, I'm going to see if we could change some of this because right now it's on the profile normal. I want to tell it on the path direction I'm going to undo path direction, apply, uh, it gives me the same results. Let's see, I'm going to undo. What if I tell it component? Now it's still giving me those same results. What about at the path at profile? Okay, well, it's doing part of what I want. Another part, it's just translating it now. I guess this kind of makes sense. There has to be a twist right here for it to twist the other way. Cars would fall off this track if this was a real path. But it still looks cool nonetheless. 
And you can see the difference between both of these. So this is what I want you to do for part of the assignment that I assigned for my students. So create your own path, uh, your profile path, and create a path and use the extrude tube option to uh, create your shape. I'm going to move this off to the side because I want to show you one other thing. Uh, if you notice down here for the output geometry, you could also export polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and select my shape, my path, my profile, and my path. This time I'm going to tell it polygons. If we get options, I'm going to tell it to do quads, and I'm going to change this to is it not um, general? I'm going to change this to pans uh, per uh, per spans number of isoparms, and this one also. Let's see. I believe this one I want to leave at three. And this time I'm going to go up to six. Let's see. Apply. And you can see you're also able to create polygon geometry from these NURB shapes. So if I click on this one, notice that this shape requires less components compared to this polygon shape. They give me similar results. And I could lower under the extrude. There are different, let's see, tessellation right here. I could lower these to see if I could lower the resolution. But if I go too low, see, this is at one. So I want something that's going to look nice. But there you go. Uh, if you decide to export either NURBS or polygons, that's fine. I just, I'm curious to, to the shape that you're able to create. I'm gonna go ahead and file uh, save scene. I need to name this one. I'm gonna use the naming convention that I'm asking you to use, which is going to be your uh, last name, first name. My last name, Figueroa, first name, Aldo. This is assignment, a site, assignment four, and this one using extrude. And I'm gonna use a Maya ASCII file. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to save, continue, excellent. Okay, great. So in the next video, we're gonna be, uh, maybe we'll be able to fix this by using LOFTS. So I'll see you in that next video.